10 seconds. Niner, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, T0. What this tremendous blast did to the atoll, nobody knows. Re-entry parties are leaving the Rendova now by helicopter. The Navy Task Group, commanded by Rear Admiral Wilkins, has the problem of providing the means to re-enter shortly after the blast to get exposed film, samples, and other scientific data. Since no land mass is available, the problem is complicated. Re-entry must be from a ship. Further, fallout will be very high starting at about M plus one hour. Helicopters must get in quickly and get out again before that hour is up. One survey group is leaving here from the S. I can't go along, but you can, and see for yourselves, through the eyes of the camera, what has happened back on the atoll. of titanic energy released by stars. But even the largest man-made explosion in the history of the world has little meaning unless we compare it to everyday items we understand. So at this point, let's replay the detonation. Go back and watch Mike in action once again. Remember those final last seconds? Five, four, three, two, This is the largest fireball ever produced. At its maximum, it measures about three and one quarter miles in diameter. Compared to the skyline of New York, this means that with the Empire State Building as zero point, the Mike Fireball would extend downtown to Washington Square and uptown to Central Park. In other words, the fireball alone would engulf about one quarter of the island of Manhattan. The tremendous upsurge of air from the detonation rapidly pushes up the mic cloud. Again, nothing of this height and width has ever before been witnessed. If the picture is stopped at this point in the cloud's growth, the height of the cloud is approximately 40,000 feet. This means that 32 Empire State buildings at 1,250 feet per building could be piled one on top the other before they would attain the cloud's height at this time, roughly two minutes after zero. Some 10 minutes later, the cloud approaches its maximum. 
At this time, the mushroom portion of the cloud has pushed up to around 10 miles and spreads out along the base of the stratosphere to a width of about 100 miles, while the stem itself is pushed upward deep into the stratosphere to a height of about 25 miles. The results of this tremendous power can be shown at the atoll. Here is an aerial photo of the test area of the atoll before the blast. And here is the same area after the blast, showing the crater caused by Mike. The outlined island in the center is former Ilugilab, the Zero Island. Sections of the islands on either side have been chopped off. The crater is roughly a mile in diameter when it is illustrated that some 14 Pentagon buildings could be comfortably accommodated in this hole.